In the worldview of ancient Greek nobility, peril and struggle were not just embraced, they were celebrated. The emotion of fear itself was almost deified. In stark contrast, comfort and safety were perceived as the real threats. These aristocrats aspired to emulate the legendary feats of Heracles and Odysseus, finding glory in overcoming adversities. Contrast this with our modern ethos, where we strive to make life as convenient and painless as possible, a complete inversion of classical values. The 19th century thinker observing this shift, warned with penetrating insight against the seductions of an easy existence. Yet many have succumbed to this lure. Consider the choice. A life brimming with ease, pleasure, but devoid of depth, versus a life filled with risks, beauty, and profound meaning. The former path leads to a superficial sadness, while the latter nourishes the soul with vigorous growth and vitality. Imagine setting off on an adventure, seeking someone to join you. Such journeys are often seen as inconvenient, disruptive, and uncomfortable, causing one to miss dinner. Think of Bilbo Baggins or Frodo from Tolkien's Tales. Had they stayed home, their stories would have been dull indeed. Yet we often script a similar, uneventful narrative for ourselves, fleeing from hardship and opting for the path of least resistance dictated by fear rather than bravery. We yearn for greatness, but shy away from the sacrifices it demands. Our era is one where people dream of robots and AI to shoulder our burdens, seek pills for every minor discomfort, and crave non-stop entertainment. If the soma of Brave New World were real, many would embrace its numbing pleasure without hesitation. This reflects Nietzsche's observation that society has turned the fierce wolf into a domesticated dog, with humanity being the most tamed of all. The Shi Tzu, a direct descendant of the mighty Chinese wolf, is a stark example. Once powerful and independent, years of comfortable living and selective breeding have diluted its essence. In contrast to its free, wild, and strong ancestors, the Shi Tzu is now a pet, pampered and dependent. Its instincts are dulled, its spirit a mere whisper of its once majestic lineage. Sadly, we resemble the Shi Tzu more than the wolf. We wallow in misery, glued to screens in dimly lit rooms, eating processed food, and ignoring our inherent instincts. This is the very pitfall that the Greeks and Nietzsche warned against, a culture that glorifies weakness. Nietzsche foresaw this alarming decline and cautioned about the emergence of the last man, a being leading a shallow life without purpose or ambition, enslaved by their baser impulses. This video series addresses the antidote to this last man syndrome. If you're watching, you likely belong to the cohort that rejects this modern decay, striving instead for personal and cultural excellence. Nietzsche's philosophy underscores this desire for greatness, advocating for a life of heroic struggle and the embracing of suffering. My own journey mirrors this philosophy, marked by a relentless battle against adversity, heartache and fear, all in pursuit of unlocking my potential. The tales and teachings of historical heroes and warrior philosophers, including Nietzsche, have been a beacon for me. Nietzsche championed the elevation of man's healthiest and most spiritually vibrant aspects. His teachings have been a source of comfort in difficult times, emphasizing that true greatness in humanity can only be achieved through lofty aspirations, self-conquest, and a willingness to endure suffering and danger. The key to reaping the richest rewards from existence is to embrace a life of risk. However, the reality is that suffering is harsh. Illness, injury, loss, loneliness and pain are part of life's tragic nature, and they're irremediable. Unfortunately, our culture lacks a profound appreciation for life's tragic drama, unlike the ancient Greeks. This has led to a diminished appetite for risk, and a devaluation of suffering. 
Nietzsche observed two distinct life approaches regarding this inherent suffering, life denial and life affirmation. In the West, life denial is prevalent, akin to the Shih Tzu approach. Life deniers reject nature's challenges, opting instead for safety and comfort. They view suffering and discomfort as evils to be eradicated. Their ultimate goal is to create a world that is safe, equal and easy, prioritizing comfort and equality above all. Nietzsche challenged this view, questioning the ultimate purpose of civilization. Is it merely to ensure safety and pleasure, or is it to cultivate exceptional individuals who can advance humanity? Isn't the creation of high culture and empowered free human beings the true objective of society? Nietzsche argued that losing sight of this aim leads us on a misguided path paved with good intentions. In stark contrast, life affirmation Nietzsche's proposed solution seeks to foster the most resilient individuals and societies. Life affirmers embrace nature's challenges, thriving through adversity. They accept life's wild, mysterious journey, not as something to escape but to conquer. They find joy in competition and in mastering themselves, building self-reliance rather than depending on external securities. Life affirmation or life denial. These paths represent our approaches to suffering and uncertainty. One path leads to increasing weakness, while the other cultivates strength and depth like never before. Nietzsche saw that our collective moral system reflects our chosen path. Do we prioritize the safety and equality of the many, or do we value heroism, nobility, and the creation of high culture? I recently read The Giver, a novel that initially depicts a utopian society governed by progressive social systems and a council of wise elders. Under the principle of sameness, there's no pain, inequality, or suffering. Everything appears orderly and perfect. However, as the narrative unfolds, this utopia reveals itself as a dystopia, where life's essence seems stripped away. The protagonist, chosen to receive the world's memories, experiences a revelation. He discovers the richness of life through memories of cold, heat, seasons, and color, elements absent in his monochromatic world. He realizes that while his community eradicated war, suffering and pain, it also lost love, family bonds, excitement, and beauty. In its quest for sameness, it sacrificed the very elements that give life its depth and vibrancy. In a world obsessed with uniformity, life's vibrancy is often lost. Without the contrast of intense pain and trials, joy and exaltation fade away. In a state of total sameness, there are no emotional highs and lows, just a flat, unfulfilling contentment that scarcely resembles true happiness. Books like The Giver and Aldous Huxley's Brave New World serve as poignant warnings for our times, illustrating the consequences of attempting to regulate and shape society to achieve universal equality, safety, and contentment. Such endeavors strip life of its intensity, power, and love. True utopia, be it personal or collective, isn't achieved by denying life's challenges but by embracing them. Every golden era from ancient Greece to the Renaissance has sprung from a mindset of heroic life affirmation. Nietzsche, in his Genealogy of Morals, stated that it's the lack of meaning in suffering, not the suffering itself, that has been humanity's curse. To live a truly excellent life and unlock our inner greatness, we must learn to view suffering as beneficial, even essential. Embracing discomfort, pain, emotional turmoil, and especially resistance and fear is crucial. Our most formidable selves emerge when we confront and conquer our greatest challenges. I delve into this concept in my book, particularly in the chapter Heroic Suffering and Unyielding Aim. The practical steps, philosophies, and exercises I discuss there go beyond what can be conveyed in this format. In essence, to fully affirm life, a compelling why is essential. 
Consider a boxer aspiring to be a world champion. For him, the blood, sweat, and tears are infused with purpose, transforming misery into motivation. This philosophy echoes in the narrative of Batman Begins, where Bruce Wayne commits to a higher cause, placing his suffering within the context of a greater purpose. This is the warrior's path, the journey of self-actualizers. By focusing on a noble ideal and dedicating ourselves to its pursuit, we transform our existence. Nietzsche envisioned the Ubermensch as the ultimate human aim, a concept we'll explore further. But the essence lies in choosing to endure suffering willingly for something greater than our mundane existence. We must rise to life's challenges, redeeming our pain through growth and transformation. This shift distinguishes the last man from higher individuals who embrace and grow through their struggles. Loneliness, for instance, can be a blessing, though many view it as a curse and seek escape in superficial distractions. Embracing loneliness as an opportunity for deep, creative and spiritual work can be incredibly fulfilling. This is Nietzsche's advised path, self-overcoming, thriving in adversity. Surprisingly, embracing suffering with honor and meaning often leads to intense joy and a profound connection with the world. The internal shift towards heroism in the face of hardship is key to realizing our greatness. This skill, however, isn't something that can be taught. It must be discovered within oneself. Answering the hero's call is challenging but transformative. Many succumb to fear, resistance and suffering, living in subjugation to these forces. But the path of the Übermensch, in a sense, is about conquering these dragons and turning darkness into light. For those who affirm life, strength is the answer to suffering, not comfort and safety. To live a fulfilling life, to excel in beauty and excellence, one must grow stronger, learning to transform life's pain into deeper love, wisdom and power. In conclusion, our exploration today has revealed a stark contrast between the ancient Greek ethos of embracing risk and the modern preference for comfort. This pursuit of ease, as depicted in The Giver and Brave New World, often leads to a life lacking depth and meaning. Nietzsche's philosophy challenges us to reconsider our societal choices, to choose between safety and equality, or heroism and the creation of high culture. True fulfillment and greatness, as Nietzsche suggests, come from embracing life's challenges, seeing value in suffering and transforming adversity into strength. It's about finding meaning in our struggles and using them as a catalyst for growth. As we wrap up this video, think about your own path. Are you succumbing to comfort or are you striving to rise above challenges? Your choice shapes not just your destiny, but our society's fabric. Thank you for joining this journey. Embrace life's challenges, strive for self-discovery, and grow in strength and purpose. But before you go, I want to remind you not to miss our last video, where we explored a fundamental concept of Carl Jung's analytical psychology. Jung's ideas offer invaluable perspectives on understanding the human psyche, essential for anyone interested in personal growth and self-awareness.